Welcome to Two Chaps Many Cultures episode 144 this beautiful Thursday. How is everybody today? Listen, you know, we get two types of questions from two groups of people. One is from the people that don't have a clue what we do. And that is really asking us, what is an interculturalist? And so this question comes up quite a lot. And that's a big question because it's a many faceted area of work. The other question is from the people who actually do do the work that we do. And they wonder how we put our message out there. What inspires us to put our message out there on this social, uh, the social media platforms that we do in various ways? So these two questions are things that we, you know, probably speak to from, in some cases, a level of expertise. In the other cases, you know, we're just making it up. However, <laughs> in this case, we have someone today who has very, very graciously agreed to come on and share his wisdom and his experience in doing exactly what uh, we're, we're trying to do here, and that's to promote a message. So stick around. It's going to be gold. And yes, as a reminder, this is the show of the business of culture and the culture of business. We, we give you the tips and the tools to uh, be the very best you can be on the global stage. The global stage, it's a big world, it's oh, a wonderful yes. world, it's a connected world. Yes, how are you and how global? How global we are, we're going to get to showcase here. Where are you in the world? Let us know because absolutely. Right? So prove it, please, people. We can't do it all by ourselves, right? Yeah, Absolutely. So as I alluded to in the intro, we we get many questions and some of it we can answer, some of it we can't. And uh, we're, we're going to bring um, today our special guest, Mitch Jackson. Let's bring him up to the stage. Big crowd, round of applause. How are you, sir? How's it going? It's <laughs> nice to see you, Brad. Good to see you, Christian. My pleasure to be here today. Thank Thanks you very much. Us. And I and and I followed uh, Mitch for many many years through uh, different iterations of different platforms, live streaming mainly. So you're known as the uh, the streaming lawyer, and uh, you've written a great book here, um, the ultimate guide to social media, and uh, it's just full of really great gold. And and you're a connector, so it's no surprise that this is contributed to by some of the biggest names in social media and uh, and their particular field of expertise. And um, I think one of the things I, I always tell people when they ask me about Mitch is that I think one many, many different memorable moments I've seen you do, but one was not long ago where you popped up at about three o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> on a live stream. And I thought, I don't know what I, even I was doing at that time in the morning, but I thought, well, that's that makes two of us. You're right. What's Mitch doing? And, you know, it was really a purely authentic uh, stream to come on and say, as a lawyer, you were, you were giving some um, insight into the thing that makes a sausage. And you were saying that it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm thinking about my client. I'm really thinking about my client intentionally and how I'm going to best represent them, put the best argument forward and things like that. And I thought, well, there's really nothing, no, no better expression of the intention and commitment to service that you do. So that has something to do with the field of work you're in, but it also is in a wider thing. So it's also, Brad, it's also my inability to go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> I, I had something on my mind and, you know, I, I fully embrace the power of, of, of social where you can, you can share who you are and what your passions, your interests, what your hobbies are. Mm -hmm. And you guys, I was up late. I couldn't sleep. I was uh, thinking about different ways. I wasn't worried, but I was thinking about different ways to approach this really important uh, uh, Zoom mediation the next day. And so I just popped on at three in the morning and just kind of shared a couple of minutes of how I felt. And, and I wanted people to know that lawyers do care. You know, good lawyers care about their clients. We care about the outcomes of our case. This is what I preach in my book. This is what all the experts talk about. Be strategically transparent, share your story. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to go to sleep until I share my story. And so I did. And I'm happy to say we won the case. Let's let's start with that. OK, but also um, also it was something that I realized it touched a lot of people. A lot of people could relate 
uh, regardless of what you do for a living, they can relate to there are things that keep us all up at night. And I think right now with this upside down COVID-19 world, we're more alike than different. We just don't realize it. And sometimes, especially for the professionals out there, when you pull back the curtain and share um, you know, who you are and what's on your mind. I mean, one of my favorite things that, you know, this Brett, one of my favorite things is to go running with my GoPro. Yeah. Right. And when the endorphins kick, kick in, I start thinking about things. And so you guys, I'll just hold this up and I'll just shoot a two or three minute video. And it always gets a great response. How many lawyers are out there creating social media content while they're out running, sweating, probably haven't shaved. My hat's probably dirty with sweat, but I try to add value and I end up connecting with other uh, people who share similar interest, either with what I'm doing or what I'm talking about. And I figured if I can do that while I'm running, I can do that at three in the morning. And then uh, it, it was fun, Brett. It was fun to show another side of who we are and what we do. Well, we discuss in, in our field of work, sorry, Chris, and just quickly, in, yeah, sure. in our field of work, we discuss stereotypes and we discussed uh, the preconceptions we bring to the judgment of others. And so it's probably, it, it's certainly no surprise to you. If people think about the law, a lawyer, they, they feel that it, when do you need a lawyer? It's like when you need a policeman. It may yeah. be only the time when you're really in trouble, right? Nobody likes us. Nobody likes us. No. <laughs> and, you know, I do. I, I love lawyers. I married one. I met, I met, I met Lisa in law school. I married yeah. her and my daughter's an attorney too. Yeah. But, you know, no one, no one likes us until they need us, yeah. generally speaking. And, um, and that's a nice, that's a fun challenge. Bring it on, you know, because as you well know, I think, we add a lot of value to the society. And I found, Brett, I didn't mean to inter interrupt you. Uh, Lord, no, I'm sorry about that. But I was yeah. just going to say uh, some of the nicest people, most interesting people I've met are in my legal community. And it's it's just been a blast. So it's imagine having imagine me representing you for a couple of years on a, on a big case that's going to change your life one way or the other. It might mm. be a business case. Maybe someone's stolen your in intellectual property. Well, you and I walk into a courtroom and it comes down to 12 people we've never met before who don't want to be there. They don't like lawyers. They want to be home with their family or at work earning a paycheck. You don't get paid to be a juror. And so think about that for a second. It's quite a challenge. Your whole business career depends on what happens over the next two weeks. You and I are in front of 12 people that don't like me to start off with. And uh, what's going to happen next? So I think what's kind of fun is tapping into that and embracing it, right? And then building rapport with the jury and, and trying to become that leader in the courtroom. The same thing applies, I think, to social media. Right now, there's so much content out there. The key is how do you create unique, memorable um, content, sometimes even entertaining content, appropriately entertaining, such that you can, you can rise to the top of all of the nonsense, all of the distractions, and be that bit of social media that actually is adding value. People want to connect and uh, uh, learn more. And uh, that's kind of like what I'm trying to do with the lawyers that I'm mentoring when it comes to the social media platforms. You know, be that attorney that's sharing his or her secret sauce. You're unique, you're memorable, you're entertaining, and you're adding value. And you're not that late night television ad that we all cringe when we see. Have you been hit? You know, yeah, <laughs> have right. you been involved in an accident? So it's kind of a fun challenge that I embrace and I really enjoy doing. And that's why I like coming on shows like this, because this this is awesome. I mean, I learned so much from what you guys are putting out. How are you creating content? Where are you sharing it? How are you repurposing it? They don't teach that in law school. Mm. Right. So we yeah. can all learn from each other. Absolutely. They don't teach us that in our profession either. Right? <laughs> so um, I, I, I like I like the way you framed it, Mitch, because it reminds me of this blue ocean, red ocean concept, right? Uh, one of my mentors once taught me uh, the internet is a beautiful thing. It is a very um, equalizing instrument. It gives everybody a microphone. That's beautiful. The problem with the internet is it gives everybody a microphone. So <laughs> yeah. now it's, it's, easy to be heard, to be seen, to be experienced, but it's hard to stand out from the crowd or to carve your niche or find your lane that you are or swim into that blue ocean to stay in that metaphor, right? Um, yeah. not, not go where all the sharks are and the water's already infested with the blood of, of those who couldn't swim fast enough. No, you want to be 
as you create content or as you are of service to your community, you want to do that in a way that as many people as possible can find it and can relate to it and find it useful. If you're mm -hmm. swimming with a crowd like all the other Barracudas, well, good luck, right? You're not going to stand out. I, I, I actually did a video a couple months ago. It's on my YouTube channel where I was in the middle of a run down at the beach, um, put the camera up on a, on a boulder next to the sand and just kneeled down and just kind of shared my, my quick story along those lines, Christian. And it impacted a lot of people. It was, I tried to be like all the other lawyers in town for the first five years, right? In Orange County, this is one of the largest legal communities, most successful legal communities in the world. We have some of the top lawyers on the planet in this county. And when because I moved Southern here, from, Californians are a lit litigious, or what is it? What's the word? Litigious. Like so, so I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know about that. I love my Southern Californians, but I will tell you, there's Thank it's like Silicon joking. Valley. There's I know you're joking. There's a lot of money and industry and activity here, and it's a big county. When I moved here from Tucson to Orange County, I knew one person, and started law school. And it's like, okay, how am I going to start my practice and build my practice? How do I stand out? How do I do what you just? which you just shared with everyone. So for the first four or five years, being a first generation lawyer, being the first one in my family to go to college, not growing up around lawyers, I wasn't really sure what I needed to do, right? And uh, let's see, probably should. Yeah, they should teach this in law school. And so I tried to do and mirror what all the other well-known lawyers in town were doing, but it's a very slow process, right? It was like I was blending in, I wasn't standing out. And after about year five or year six, I realized if I'm doing things like every other lawyer in town, uh, I'm doing it wrong. And so what I started doing back then is I grabbed a couple of friends of mine that were lawyers and one or two judges, started taking them down to the motocross tracks where I used to ride and race motocross for 38 years. And we started taking pictures and sharing pictures in the lawyer magazines. We didn't have the internet back then, you guys. This is, mm. this is mid 80s. And we started talking about our weekly motocross trips and other things we were doing. And all of a sudden, guess what? I was getting like senior partners and law firms reaching out to me. Hey, Mitch, I used to ride mini bikes when I was little. Can I join you guys next week when you go down to the tracks? And I realized, okay, sharing some of the things that I enjoy doing, motocross, hang gliding, snow skiing, uh, paddle boarding, surfing, windsurfing back then, I was able to grab these high influence, high influence partners and claims adjusters and get them out to do things other than playing golf, other than hitting the tennis ball. And all of a sudden things started to take off. When the internet rolled around, we put up our first website in 96, dived into social media as that rolled out. And what we've been doing from that point through today is continuing to amplify all the different things that we enjoy doing while also sprinkling into that, you know, different, different legal tips. Uh, there's mm. a, a news story, for example, when uh, Rudy Giuliani was sued by uh, the uh, voter electronic voter system for defamation a few days ago. Yep. You know, I Dominion. immediately, Dominion, Dominion, they were sued by Dominion. Well, I immediately hopped onto Clubhouse, which is an audio only platform, and I uh, had a conversation with a couple of the lawyers about what that meant. What are the, what are the issues? What do I think is going to happen? And the room just filled up with 90% of the people in there. I had never had the pleasure of meeting before, but we invited everyone up to stage. We answered their questions. Uh, the attorney who's representing Dominion is a gifted trial lawyer who graduated from Notre Dame. He has multiple 20 and $30 million high profile defamation verdicts under his belt. Uh, Mr. Giuliani is in a lot of trouble. And, and, and I was very frank about sharing my opinion on that. But what was interesting is after that room was over, um, the connections on Instagram, on Twitter, you, for those of you not on Clubhouse, you can link out and connect with people in, on Instagram and Twitter and in their direct private messages. Um, the relationships, the connections that were starting to form just from that one live audio broadcast probably has more value for me than anything I've done all last year. So Tom, sometimes it's just a matter of tapping into a breaking news story, uh, sharing value. We weren't pointing fingers at anybody. We weren't criticizing mm -hmm. anybody. We're talking about, this is a big deal. He's being sued mm -hmm. for over a billion dollars. Let's talk about this. 
And, uh, and it was a fun conversation. Everybody kept it positive. The only thing about Clubhouse is it's not recorded. So we mm -hmm. can't repurpose the content, but we'll probably do a follow-up live video just like you guys are doing right here uh, to talk about not only that, but other breaking news stories. So it's a matter of doing things different than everyone mm -hmm. else while you're adding value that I think allows you to stand out on social media. Well, yeah, we, we, we will have to open a few yeah. more um, Four Seasons landscaping businesses in order to pay for his legal bills, I guess. <laughs> um, but Unbelievable, I love that. Thank you for saying that. But so, but you, you, your nickname in in social media is the streaming lawyer. So, <laughs> what does this mean to somebody who has no idea what you're doing? Are you the lawyer that likes to stream content, or are you the lawyer that yeah. understands the legal implications of streaming live streaming content? Are you both? How, how what sets you? What sets Mitch sure. Jackson apart from the legal crowd? So I should have given it more thought. But let me let me tell you a little secret on how that that I'm all the above. Right. But uh, I was speaking down at Social Media Day San Diego for a dear friend of mine, Tyler Anderson, that's got casual Fridays. And he wanted me to come down and hop on stage and share with 400 entrepreneurs uh, some of the legal things they might want to take into consideration when forming these multimillion dollar companies with a couple of Twitter DMs or text messages. So we talked about using documents and contracts and and uh, incorporating their companies or maybe creating a limited liability company, using venue clauses in your agreements and everything else in between. But as I was going down there, one of the biggest challenge I've, challenges I've seen is, you know, we have a lot of people out there that want to start their companies, want to be entrepreneurs, but they just don't know where to start. They're worried about how much it's going to cost. So I set up a free wor a WordPress site and I called it the streaming, it's streaming.lawyer. And it all had to do with Periscope and live streaming. In other words, I'm just going to share my content here. It has nothing to do with my law firm website, but it has everything to do with what we've already talked about, my hobbies, my interests, my passions, live video, and, and typical social media content. And so when I went down there, part of my presentation that particular year was it doesn't cost anything to get started between Gmail, between free video services like Periscope between the WordPress site and I put it up behind me, created this light, everyone. It didn't cost me a dime. That's where streaming.lawyer uh, uh, started. And then what we did is we just could kind of continued to walk our talk and, and share content there. Mostly, most of it's focused towards helping online business owners, um, social media agencies and brands. There's a link there. You've got the brand the agency, and then, you know, the company that wants to promote their products and services and just different legal things they may want to take into consideration, uh, profiling effective social media approaches to share, create sharing content, platforms that I enjoy using. So Christian, it's all of the above. And it just kind of took a life of its own over the last, I don't know, maybe eight or nine years. And it's been fun. There's some really there's some stuff up there that I look at. I'm like, oh, this content is so bad, right? <laughs> That's half the fun of being a pioneer for all of us right now. We're all pioneers, even though some of us have been doing this a long time. We're just digital and socials. Just get this is just getting started, right? Watch the first couple yeah. of videos that Gary Vaynerchuk put on YouTube, and you'll you'll Absolutely. cringe just as much, right? Where none of us were born rock stars. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I speak yeah. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. So I just left everything up there. And if people want to, you know, kick me in the kneecaps over some something stupid I said six years ago, bring it on. I, it really doesn't matter to me. It's I, I love to hug my haters, as Jay Bear would say, and keep moving forward each and every day. And I think on social, once you develop that mindset, keep creating new content, learn how to repurpose content in a way that creates a new message, a, a different perspective a fresh idea or take on something that everyone else is talking about. Give yourself permission to be different. And as soon as you do that, that's when the magic happens. Mm. Well, this is this is my friend here in Chicago, Mark. Um, uh, and he he's, a, he's in the fitness world, right? So he's, again, oh, really? both really? him and his wife are putting content out there and, and to stand above the crowd. So uh, I know that he's he's got a personal interest in this. So he's looking at the site. So would you, what, is there a site that, and we probably will get to this later, where would you send people that want to know who Mitch Jackson is um, same, immediately? Same place, same place, Brett. I, I would just go to streaming.lawyer 
yeah. or just type in Mitch Jackson on Google or on social media. It's most of my platforms are at Mitch Jackson. So I love connecting yeah. with everybody. Absolutely. And you've, and you, and Christian mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk. I've seen you interview Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, this is the kind of rock star status you've got, sir. So <laughs> he's a. Well, he was, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. We go back a ways. We go back a ways. Right. And um, I'll tell you uh, my favorite story. So when this book came out, you guys, um, when this yeah. book came out, and the reason I, I reached out to about 50 social media experts who are all friends of mine to contribute chapters. Okay, out of the 52 chapters, I think I wrote eight of them. The remaining chapters were all uh, contributed as a, as a favor to me by some of the top social media experts on the planet. So if you want to mm. learn about LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook Live, Facebook Average, whatever it is, it's in there. The only thing that's not in there is TikTok and obviously Clubhouse because they went around right? when the book came out. And um, But anyway, about a week when the, after the book came out, my son comes downstairs Sunday morning. He's got his phone like this and he's like, dad, he's on snap. And he goes, dad, snap, my Snapchat's lighting up. He goes, all my friends think you're a, uh, you're a rock star. I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. And he goes, they're, 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 they're snapping about how Gary V just tweeted your book out to 1.8 million people. Wow. Right. And I didn't ask Gary to do it. It was very nice of him to do it. And he just, he's like, I haven't read the book yet, but I wanted to show Mitch some love. And you guys know he doesn't normally tweet out about products or services. Right. And uh, so when we're, I said, well, that's really cool, Garrett. And obviously Amazon blew up when that happened. But I said, Garrett, here's the life lesson. Don't let what somebody does, it's a random generous act. And I really appreciate that. But your dad is a rock star with or without Gary's help, right? And yeah, Gary's yeah. like, ah, oh, dad, you know. And then he went back <laughs> up to his bedroom and closed the door. But it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's fun when um, you can tap into the power of other people's audiences on social media. You can help each other. As Bob Berg, you know, dear friend of mine, co-author of the Go Giver series of books. There's a reason why Bob's chapter is the second chapter in the book, because unless you've got that mindset, social's not going to work for you. And, you know, by just embracing and helping and giving and giving and giving more, especially for the lawyers out there, it's not always easy. That's not the way we're wired. That's not what we're taught in law school. We're taught to drop gloves, step between the ropes and knock out our opponents when it comes to trial. Well, that might be true, but... When you're in trial, and the reason I've had success in trial is I'm always hard on issues. I'm tough on issues, but I'm kind to people. So you've got someone on the witness stand in front of those 12 strangers who we've never met before. I'll be tough on the issues, but I'll always be polite and professional and kind to the person on the witness stand. My job's not to make them look bad. My job is to make sure the jury understands that what they're saying is either incorrect, it's inaccurate, or it's purposefully misleading. And I can do that without being an asshole in the courtroom. And I think the same thing applies on social media. Mm -hmm. and, and Mark, you says, go give her amazing read. So I have a, yeah. th there's a whole slew of questions that come from that. And, and I, I know on. that a lot of people in our profession, Brett's my profession, uh, are, are thinking about becoming more present and more sharing and giving in in social media and some of some of them might be struggling either because they either they think that's a big obstacle to overcome before they can actually be there on screen or do right. or host room and clubs or whatever it may be so there we go Bob Berg, just, there it is. Bob Berg, there's the chapter. I didn't want to interrupt you, but it, you know, this is there's a reason why it's chapter two. This is critically important, you guys. Christian, I'm very sorry for so, so the, the giver's gain is is the benefit of doing that. But how, what would you tell people who say, "Well, this is COVID times, right? I'm struggling to make ends meet yeah. to begin with. I I don't have things to give away because I need to be charging for my expertise and my competence wherever I can. Mm. I don't I don't have time or or the the uh, the buffer anymore to to uh, give stuff away. What would be your answer to that? Well, my answer to that is I understand. I mean, this has been uh, with the clients that we represent, friends of mine. Uh, whether it's business challenges, whether it's health and safety issues with COVID nineteen, I get it. That that's the new reality. Um, one way that you can be a go giver is to um, be empathetic and give your time, give your attention, give your ear to what someone's saying on social. Or if you see somebody that has a challenge, 
you know, reaching out to them with a phone call, with a text, with a, with a private Zoom, and just being there and listening for other people. I think that's part of being a go-giver. I do think that, um, you know, even if you've got business challenges like you describe, or maybe you've got, you know, personal challenges in your life, you know, mental health, uh, stress right now, I think there are other factors we all need to take into consideration. One of the things I've found is it, it feels good to help other people. You know, introducing you, Christian, to someone who I might know, or simply going to your LinkedIn post and typing in a comment and sharing it in my feed, for example. It takes right. about 15 or 20 seconds, uh, and it can change, it can put a smile on so many people that you're never gonna meet, that you may not even know who's out there just by, by doing these things. And sometimes that introduction or that share of a social media post, sometimes it can change a life. You know, it can put one person in front of another person and then the rest is history. And, sure. uh, you know, and so I think there's all types of ways to do it. Obviously, some people have the ability to be a go-giver more so than others. But I think we all, if we dig down deep, um, I think it's self-medication. By being a go-giver, we're actually taking care of ourselves. That's and you, you make, you, yeah, you mentioned Clubhouse before, and this is obviously something that's not in the book, as it's a new app, and uh, it's yeah. a great app. And and I would just like, I thought of a story when you were saying this um, <coughs> recently. You know, you know, uh, Johnny Costas for. Uh, 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 Johnny from jo Chocolate Johnny. We'll call him Chocolate, oh, Chocolate, Chocolate Johnny. Johnny. Yes, right? yes, 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 yes. The, uh, the Australian. Uh, and I was on a, uh, a clubhouse with him the other day and he had his friend who was a multi, who was a television personality, a pretty well-known personality uh, on, on, on the um, Australian stage, anyway, in television. And we were just bringing people up on the stage to share what they're doing and what you know what they're lo looking at in their future careers. And one lady did get up on stage and said, uh, "When I call on the stage, I mean on the app." But uh, she yeah. said, "We well, you know, I've, I've, I'm kind of redirecting my professional life into virtual assistant because I'm I really am passionate about supporting the voice of others that have the skills to put themselves out there. I don't want to do it myself, but I want to be their eyes and ears." And Johnny got on and he said, well, strangely enough, you know, Costa and I are actually talking today about hiring a virtual assistant. Oh, so she, went from, she went from having just, yeah. as she said, I've just got my website up. I'm not sure how to get clients to being connected with one of the biggest television personalities in Australia and him saying, I would love to talk to you about coming and supporting me. So you never know where you're going to be who you're going to connect with, who you're going to impact. And this is really at the fundamental uh, uh, core of what we do in the intercultural world is that this is a global. And by the way, I just want to mention before I finish, this book also has contributions from Nicholas Moore, right, who talks about international impact mm -hmm. of social media, right? I and, love Nicholas. Uh, He's such a, such a great professor at Chapman University and such a great – today's yeah. his birthday, by the way. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't so, know that. so, Nicholas, if you're watching this, happy birthday! We love you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I, you know, he. So these things are just so we see these things happen when you engage so much on social media. So, uh, when when I'm kind of on these platforms, you know, I, I, there may be things that I'll say that are silly, but I, I think at some stage, if there's a small nugget I can offer somebody that impacts them and make and, and, and helps them in their life or connects them, right? Connects them with different people. Absolutely. I think it's great. And you do and you do that in spades. That's why, you know, we, we wanted you to come on and discuss the, the great example you are in this. This is fantastic. Yeah. You know, what's interesting yeah. is we're I, I introduced uh, Bob on Clubhouse uh, and hosted a room. So Bob Bird came in. Everybody knows Bob. So everyone came in and, and met him and asked him questions. One young lady who's thinking about law school, she lives in Texas, uh, asked Bob a couple of questions. And I suggested she get Bob's book, Adversaries and Allies, which is one of the best people skills books I've ever read or been exposed to. I won't even mentor a young trial lawyer until they've read Adversaries and Allies. It's just that good. It's like one of my favorite books of all time. And he's known for his go-giver series of books, but but his his anyway. And uh, so we're talking about it, and I I mentioned to her, I said, you know what, DM me your address, and I'll make sure you get a copy of the book. I mean, she was genuinely interested in the book, right? Bob steps in, he goes, Mitch, no, 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 no. 
I've got a few extra books here at the house. Um, let me go ahead and send her the book. Long story short, just today on LinkedIn, and I shared it in my LinkedIn feed, she posted a picture with the book. <laughs> I'm sure there's a signature in there from Bob Berg. Yeah, uh, and so I'm curious to see, I'm excited to see her journey. I loved how Bob walked his talk as a go-giver. And I know she's going to be a great student when she goes to law school and she's going to be a great, caring, thoughtful lawyer someday when she graduates. And so it's those little touches, I think, on social that you do consistently over the long term, which is how you can build out your brand, how you can build out your reputation. And, and when it's all said and done, if you're on social for business purposes, that's how you build your business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Christian, you were going to say something. What's the best way to get your book um, through an online vendor or? So it's on website? Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon, uh, both uh, paperback, Kindle and Audible. We had Rich Miller, who's a professional voice actor out of uh, Tucson, Arizona, where I grew up, uh, read the book. Uh, his voice is much more pleasant to listen to than mine. And, uh, and frankly, I didn't have time to do it, you guys. I, sh I Looking back, I wish I had spent the time to read my own book. Um, but uh, Rich Miller did that. And then if you go to streaming.lawyer over on the right, you'll see uh, some other links along with recommendations and people. For a while, the first month the book came out, everybody was sending in their picture, holding up a picture of the book. And so we kind of did a collage of all those. And you'll recognize a lot of people uh, on that page. It's kind of fun. I had a lot of friends go out of their way to really uh, help the book successful. And so I wanted to continue to share that with everyone. All right. Great. Glad we were able to answer that. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. And so when just a just a kind of an application, a, 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 a question about the application, if you were talking to somebody that actually nothing to do with lawyering, but just on social media and you, they said, look, I, there's so many looks to be so many choices out there. We've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, we've got Clubhouse now. Is there a, a strategy that you would suggest to people in terms when they're assessing these to to either go deep on one or you know, you mentioned repurposing all these kind sure. of things. So what, what would be your suggestions there? You know, it kind of depends on the person in the company. I mean, you want to be where your audience is, number one. So hopefully you can figure that out. You also want to mm -hmm. create content uh, in a way that's, I think, enjoyable, something you're comfortable with doing. I think when it's not a hassle to create content, you'll tend to create more and better content. Uh, as Gary Vee said a couple of days ago on Clubhouse, I'd recommend people start there. I mean, it is it is the hot app right now, and yeah. I don't know how long it's going to be around. Um, but I'm telling you guys, if you dive in and you and you and you embrace Clubhouse the right way, <clears throat> you can really expand your sphere of influence almost instantly. I mean, within days if you do it the right way. I think you can uh, repurpose. Uh, when I say you can share blog posts or do videos like this about your clubhouse experiences or take that clubhouse conversation over to a live video. I had a gentleman on that was a, a Super Bowl champion playing for the uh, New England Patriots, who's now a motivational speaker and a consultant. And what he and I purposefully did is we did a live video show like this. And then we invited everyone over 15 minutes after we were done onto clubhouse to dive deep on the two or three most talked about issues. And we dived in as a brand new audience who most were not on the live video to conversation. And so I think um, I'm a big fan of video and live video like this. I think if you're comfortable with video or you can push yourself to comfortable with video, this is a great way to double down on your time because I'm tapping into Christian and Brett's audience. They're tapping into mine. I'm going to share this all over social media for the next couple of months, I'm gonna set it up in a pulse and in lately, and it's going to share automatically. Um, if you guys send me the uh, the video, you know, the, the video and audio portion of this, I'm gonna upload it into lately. Lately is going to use its AI to create 50 to 125 uh, social media posts, like within seconds. It'll take the little 30 second clip of the part that uh, it thinks I may wanna post, It'll put the transcript below it. We can go in, clean it up a bit, maybe add some link. We can queue all that up. It's going to take us about 45 minutes is what it takes us for a one-hour live video show. Um, we'll probably take bits and pieces and get little audio clips that will automatically go out over the next 30 to 60 days. 
you know, using technology, I think, to help automate the uh, the repurposing part of what we do, that's where a lot of people, I think, drop the ball. They they create mm -hmm. their, their awesome shows, awesome podcasts. They create that social post that just generates a little traction, and then they don't do anything with it. And um, so to specifically answer your question, I would embrace platforms that you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with video or live video, I think that's the place to be in addition to Clubhouse. And then take that content in on Twitter and LinkedIn. Instagram's huge, right? Instagram's huge. Uh, and that's what I would, it's it's just a matter of, of biting off much. You know, it's, it's, it's like making it fun, enjoying the process. It's social, right? It doesn't work, it's work media. It's not hate media, it's social media. And mm. so I always try to kind of balance everything we're doing with things that I'm interested in, and that's the content you'll see. You'll know my position when it comes to politics and social issues. I'm an open book. You know? I can do that as a lawyer because that's just who I am and why I became an attorney. Uh, and it has connected me with 10 times more people over the past four years than alienated me with a small segment of people that I don't want to be around anyway. Okay. Yeah. I don't really care. And so, but I'm passionate about that. So it doesn't feel like work for me to talk about certain sensitive issues. So that's the long answer to your short question, which is what lawyers are famous for doing. So I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh that, my goodness that, that's perfect that that is absolutely gold thank you very much and and certainly i guess we would say that we probably don't do that either i mean one of the one of the things we bring guests onto the show is to learn from them i mm -hmm. even do it with clients i work with i say you know this is not a lecture this is actually a learning experience for both of us and this has been huge i i really am yeah. so grateful i can't, couldn't tell you how grateful i could be but this is this is great. We probably need to go off and do a little bit of work, Christian. Uh, maybe you can. I, you know, no, I can. No, we can it's, <laughs> well, you know, you know what's interesting is think about this for a second. So we've all been on social for a long time. And look at all the things that have changed over the years. We've watched platforms come and go. We've, yes. uh, we've seen platforms develop and go from unpopular to popular. We've seen new aspects of platforms be added that have just taken off. And so it's a matter of being nimble and agile and really trying to see, you know, what's out there, what's rolling out, what does our audience enjoy? How do they enjoy consuming our content? And then if you're not comfortable putting out content on those platforms, then thinking to yourself, how can I push myself so I can pick up one of these phones, press the go live button and actually, actually do a video and be comfortable with doing it, right? And so, I think it's a combination of all the above that makes this an interesting life digital dance. It changes all the time. And for me, that's what makes it interesting. I have something exciting happen today. You guys want to know what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Because, because no. there's a follow-up There's a follow -up question for the, I like you, Kristen. You're, you're, there's a follow-up <laughs> question that I want to ask you guys. So I just got an email today that I am officially an influencer for Amazon. And I was exposed to Amazon Live a couple of weeks ago, and it just blew my mind as to what that platform's all about, how you can tap into the power of Amazon Live and its global community. And then at the same time, if I'm talking about laptops or, or trial exhibits and tools that lawyers can use in the, uh, in the courtroom, below me on the carousel, I can have the items that I highly recommend. And, um, and this gets broadcasted around the world. It's it's fascinating. Um, are you guys using Amazon Live? Do you have clients that are using it? Have you looked into it? Any tips for me on what I should pay attention to, what I may or may not want to do? It's a new platform, so I don't want to put you guys on the spot. Mm -hmm. I just kind of found out about it myself. But what I do you guys think? I admit that I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. No, well, okay. uh, well, somebody, and I only just saw it as a post that somebody did the other day that said Amazon Live, and I did make a wow. mental note to actually check into it because I'm a shiny penny guy, Mitch. You know, I, if you you put something like that in front of me, I'm like, I'm like, take a, a look. Uh, 
after a, a laser pointer. But um, that's that. Then, uh, of course, yes, I, I couldn't tell you. I think that, um, but it sounds amazing, especially if you can connect um, the products that you're talking about. I think it, it is amazing. So it's uh, another thing I've got to go and do. Thanks, Espe much, Mitch. Well, especially, Brett, especially if you've got clients that are selling products and services on Amazon, it allows yeah. you to go live like this and have this type of conversation and then monetize it by, by displaying the products or services, whether it's books, whether it's expensive laptops, whatever it might be. Mm. Uh, I know the, uh, the guys that uh, turned me on to it we're talking to their run. One's a runner, and he was talking about his Garmin watch, and they had set that up. And I think, I think the way it works is the algorithms listening to what we're saying, depending on how you configure it. And I think it's pushing our video beneath those product items across Amazon while we're live. I know that's the case with the products that we specifically select and include in our carousel. And so, some things I was thinking about is if I'm interviewing a famous runner about stretching and workout exercises and maybe their favorite race and and different strategies for a 10k or a marathon maybe while i'm doing that instead of just going live on Streamyard, i'm going live on Streamyard and amazon live and i've got top 10 running shoes in the carousel and or maybe his or her favorite running shoe plus nine other options depending on the size of your foot I, you know from what i'm reading and hearing it's it's a interesting uh monetization that adds value to the off to the audience because you're sharing products that you believe in, but also it helps distribute the scope, expands the scope of your shows into the Amazon network. Now, I'm just a lawyer, but I get the power of everything that it brings to the table. So I'm gonna dive in head first over the next 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll learn more. And if you guys, you know, touch base with me, if you want to, you know, brain, you know, brainstorm ideas on, on how we can use this for our clients. Absolutely. So there'll be a clubhouse room discussing those experiences you've had. So you got it. You got it. That. The three of us will be co-moderating it. Absolutely. I'd love to. Let's figure it out first though, right? Is that a requirement yeah. on social media? Do you really have to know what you're doing? No, I don't think so. No, not well. I don't know. We just we just make it up. We're still trying to. I say I tell my clients, I'm still waiting for that day where I wake up and people um, discover that I really don't know what I'm talking about and uh, I get caught out. But uh, yeah, no, that, no kidding, no kidding. You're not alone. We all have imposter syndrome. That's for sure. You know, it, I was I was on um, this morning, seven o'clock my time. Uh, I was a guest in a New York high school classroom who has a mock trial team, and I do this every year for mm. this classroom, for this teacher. And um, and uh, so the kids are asking me about trial advocacy and how to put on the case and great questions, right? And um, where was I going? Well, what did you just say, Brett? Because what I, what I was gonna say was relevant to, oh. And, yeah. so, uh, so, and so one of the students was asking me, well, do you, do you still get nervous when, you know, on a big case, you're standing up in front of a jury, you've never met them before, you don't know what's gonna happen. And I said, absolutely. I've, I've tried I've tried 70 plus cases. The average number of trials in California for a trial lawyer is three trials, okay? I've tried 70 plus cases. I've won 67, 68 of them. Most of them I've won. And I said, every time I stand up, um, I get butterflies and I'm nervous. And I feel the same way when I'm going live on, on social media or even on Clubhouse. And it's not because I don't feel like I know I know what I'm doing. I'm ready. I'm prepared. I'm more prepared than anybody else in that courtroom. That's always been my secret is to outwork the other side. I've never been accused of being the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'll admit that you guys, if you saw my grades, you would agree with me. I squeezed a four year degree into a five year experience at the university of Arizona. I wouldn't change a thing. It was the best five years of my life. I squeezed, right? But here's the thing. You get nervous because you care. You get nervous because you are, you want a great outcome for your client. You actually care about how you're coming across on the live video. You actually care about having a good, meaningful room on Clubhouse. And if that's the reason you're nervous, then I think that gives you additional power. It actually helps you elevate your game. It only lasts for 20 or 30 seconds. Yeah. And then you settle in and then it's time to go. But uh, it's when you're not nervous is when I think you need to be, pardon me? Mark has the comment that I've, I've been yeah. waiting to to make because I, I completely agree with with Mark right here. Um, one of my <laughs> one of my friends and teachers uh, who was uh, in, in quantum physics said it's the same molecular response in our neural system whether we're 
nervous or afraid or excited. It's it's the same kind of neural connection. So as long as we keep telling ourselves, no, no, Mark, or no, no, Christian, or no, no, Brett, this isn't fear. This is excitement, right? So it, it's the same thing. It's 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 physiologically, chemically, the same the same same thing going on in our bodies. However, it's a lot of us choose to label it as something negative, right? Sure. It's like uh, butterfly is afraid, uh, which is what I would do if I was standing up talking about molecular physics, it would be fear. I'm just going to be real with you. But it's, it's, I think what we do is we sabotage ourselves and we allow things to, to be interpreted the easiest way to give ourselves an excuse not to do it, to settle the case instead of going to trial, to avoid going on a live video. Instead, let me just send over a blog post for you guys to share with your audience. And I think once I figured that out by reading books, by talking to, to mentors of mine over the years, um, to getting kicked in the ass a couple of times by my beautiful bride saying, get out there, go in that case, you know, which is great. Lisa's always been just an awesome inspiration in my life. Um, once I figured that out, it was like, okay, this is not being nervous. This is being excited. This is being ready. This is caring about the client. Christian, once I figured that out, it just, everything turned into a game. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. That's it's right. like, you can only be in control. Focus. One of the other kids this morning, you know, once I explained that, I said, you know, he goes, well, what else? And I said, the other thing is focus on what you have control over. I'm not in control of what those jurors are going to do or what emergency is going to come before the court on another case. Um, But just focus on what you have control over, prepare or over prepare. Everything else falls into place. Yeah. Yeah. If I could could just share one story that please. When you said this, uh, um, I had the really great fortune and honour to to be in front of my national rugby team at uh, Soldier Field, right, in front of 20, 25,000 people um, and sing the national anthem. So this was, you know, you're alone in the middle of the field with a big crowd in front of you and preparing for it was exactly what you're talking about. I mean, certainly nervousness, excitement. Uh, but I pretended that, and, and I knew, and I had some buddies in the up in the stands that, uh, and I thought to myself, well, I'm just going to sing for them. I've bored them with my uh, or, m- my performances of the uh, of the anthem in the past, so they know I can sing it. I know I can sing it. They, you know, there's nothing about this, and so it was just this sense of peace. Um, that I can go out and do this. Now there were some, there were a lot of technical things in a stadium that can go wrong. You've seen all, we've seen these videos, right? So I thought, well, I'm just going to go and do it. But um, it was a great experience. The only thing was that I did have my phone in the. They gave me a dressing room, you know, and uh, they, I had my phone in the dressing room as I'm in. I'm dressed up in my suit and I'm about to go out onto the field. I hear my phone vibrating and I go back and I think, well, I've, I've got to go and see maybe who that is. <laughs> And it actually happened to be my daughter from Australia um, who was watching the feed on TV in Australia, my wow. eldest daughter. Wow. And she just, she just said, she just said, I said, what's up, sweetheart? I've got to go out. And she said, Daddy, I just want to tell you I'm proud of you. Mm. That nearly killed me. That almost got the, l- the lump in the throat. But the rest of it, in, in fact, in just being at peace and just knowing the confidence of going out there mixed with the tendency of the nervousness, was was great, and I and and so that's a big stage, um, yeah, but I've yes. done the small stages. I think it's great. So it really relates to what you were talking about there, having the confidence in in what you know and how to do it. But if you're not nervous, I think what you know that I would that would raise flags if you're not completely you know got a little bit of air, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a book by a gentleman whose name I cannot pronounce. His first name is Mihal, and his last name is made up of the five last letters of the alphabet, and it's called <laughs> um, Flow, uh, being in the state of flow. So those wow. of you who are familiar with neurolinguistic programming, I think Mitch is is in that arena as well. Um, <laughs> you might want to look into that because the state of flow is where we are both challenged and in our zone of genius, where time passes without us realizing it and being in a state of flow is when kobe bryant rest may his soul rest in peace was under the basket and it was time stood still when you're a a race car driver if you watch ford versus ferrari there's this one scene where he explains how going 300 kilometers an hour or 200 miles per hour for those of you who don't do metrics uh, is 
everything around you slows down because you're so yeah. in the zone of your genius. That's when we're in flow. But flow also means that we are excited, that we are all of our, our, our neurons are firing in overload, right? It's not that we're we're doing this in our sleep. This, this is a misconception that a lot of people have is, well, you wake me up at three in the morning uh, to listen to Mitch, who's also up at three in the morning. Um, no, you wake me up at three in the morning and I can do this in my sleep. That's not flow. This is memorization. This is rote. But flow is when you're still fully engaged, when you have to give it your all and it doesn't scare you, but it excites you and you're zoned in, zero in on it. And that's mm. a rare state to be in. And once you've experienced it, whatever in your life that may be, it feels really, really good. I it's, mean. And, and when you're in the flow, I love that. I wrote it down. I'm going to read the book. You know, even when things don't go, go, don't go the way you want them to you can continue to move forward. It's not a devastating uh, situation. I was, uh, after a long day of moving our son and daughter back up to LA for school, this is a couple, two years ago, uh, all day in LA, actually moving and physically doing all that kind of stuff, going out to dinner that night, uh, celebrating our daughter's birthday, flying out early the next morning to Las Vegas. I was speaking with David Merriman Scott on stage at the Tony B Robbins Business Mastery in front of 2,000 people. I was exhausted. Uh, it's late at night, probably eight or nine at night. And David calls me up on stage. So I go running up the steps to the stage. And guess what happens? My toe catches the last step as I'm running up. And I'm a runner, right? <laughs> and I probably was just in the flow, but I wasn't in the flow enough. And I go, I do one of these. As I'm like, whoa, going towards David, almost falling. Do I do it again. Do it the, again. People see what you. I'm like, doing. whoa! It's like one of the, and I have my phone. It's like one of these extended, trying to like catch the air to keep from falling. And David kind of catches me, and we we don't go down, but it's like, okay, that just happened, right? And it's like it was kind of embarrassing, but whatever. You guys know me by now. I didn't really care, but it's funny. We turned around, and it was quiet, and we're like. Let's do this, right? I don't remember exactly what we said, but we just jumped right back into it. There's a lot of energy at those shows, and everybody's clapping. And I think it just humanized me for everyone being like, what's that lawyer doing on stage? To, oh, look at that lawyer's going to fall flat on his face, to, wow, that could have happened to me. And David and Mitch are having fun with it. And now they're presenting some really cool stuff. This stuff happens in life. And I think all you need to do is just, don't worry about it. Just embrace it. I tell young lawyers when they're in trial, when they're giving their opening statement, you know what most lawyers do in today's world is they'll grab their laptop like this for an opening statement. They'll grab their laptop. This is a laptop, everybody. They'll put it on the lectern. The jury's over there. Right, they're here. And they'll look down and they'll, uh, they'll go like this for their opening statement. Oh, or they'll bring their pad and they'll put it down and they'll actually kind of read their opening statement. And I tell jurors, or I tell lawyers, look, by the time you get to trial, if you've prepared correctly, you know the facts inside out, you know the evidence inside out. Um, just leave your leave your laptop and your yellow pad on the counsel table, walk up, maybe even walk back and forth in front of the jury, make eye contact and speak from the heart. Right. It's okay to have some bullet points on a card or on the lectern that you can refer to if you get nervous, if you get stuck, if you're not sure what the next thing is you want to talk about, but, you know, just giving them permission to, to do this. And without exception, the lawyers that follow this advice, that prepare, they're ready, they go in and they don't rely upon their laptops and their yellow, yellow pads or legal pads. Um, they're the ones where I get a phone call or an email afterwards, Mitch, it's, I was in the flow. It was the first time I ever felt part of the courtroom, part of the story, part of the solution, which by the way, the jury found in favor of our client is because they allowed themselves to be part of this flow. And it's magical when it happens, but you got to give yourself permission to do so. Same thing right. with these types of shows, right? There's a flow to it. We've kind of bounced around in a very natural way on different topics that are of interest to us. And they may not all resonate with everyone in the audience, both live and recorded, but for those people that are still here, for those people that are watching the recorded show right now, it's resonating with them. And I think that's what's important for a lot of social media content 
uh, producers to remember is you can't satisfy everyone, but you can create content that that connects with the right people at the right time to get the right results. You can only be yourself, right? Oscar Wilde said it. Everybody else is taken, right? If if you if you're trying to yeah, do something absolutely. for everyone, my grandma, may her soul rest in peace. Too, she always said, "Christian, you'll you'll never do it right for everybody." Because by by trying to do so, you'll be super mediocre. So yeah. be who you are and find your tribe, find your audience, and the rest you don't care about because they never they were never gonna be your audience to begin with. I mean, I care about them, but 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 I'm tired of leading a horse to water and trying to make it drink. Exactly. Uh, a lot of lawyers out there understand they want to build out their brands on social, but they don't want to put in the time or the energy to do so. And that's fine. It's not for everyone. Um, law school is not for everyone. Being a lawyer is not for everyone. But for those people that understand the power of what we're talking about right now, and for those uh, you know businesses that have been in the cloud or in the cloud now, and they're building out digital uh, aspects to their products or services because of what we've all been through with COVID, in my opinion, those are the companies, those are the lawyers, those are the professionals that are going to be here long term because they're embracing what the consumer wants in today's world. They're positioning themselves to be more bulletproof when it comes to things like COVID or natural disasters or political unrest, whatever it might be. If you're in the cloud and you can access your company and provide services from anywhere to anyone, um, I just think that's smart. And in fact, I know that I'm right. Like this is something where I know I'm right about this. I've been in business for almost 40 years, 34 owning my own law firm. I know how to how to build and run a successful practice. And I'm not wasting my time trying to convince anyone to do anything that I'm doing. Yeah, I hope they do and I do care about them but there's a lot of really interesting, fascinating people that get what we're talking about and they're embracing it, they're living it, they're tasting it, they're hearing it. And those are my people right now. So it is what it is. All right. Absolutely. Awesome. Amen to that. Well, I think we, you know, Christian and I, I, I'm not speaking for Christian, but I know his heart and I know that we're very, you know, one of the our aspects is, is gratitude. We are so grateful to you, uh, Mitch. Uh, this has just been gold. I mean, pleasure was all mine. No, no, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And um, so we encourage anybody, please connect with Mitch, get the book, get the book. It's great. And, <laughs> and, and, and reach out to him and also connect with uh, the content on Clubhouse and uh, all the different platforms he's on. We're on Clubhouse too. We're on YouTube. We're on all the, uh, you know, as many socials as we can. So please reach out to us. Any comments, questions, any feedback we can give you, you know, it is, yep, absolutely, yep. Follow, the, follow these guys right here. Follow these guys on all the social platforms. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and we thank you ahead of time um, for, for your input uh, to all the audience. So thank you, all those that joined. Even my brother from Australia, look back there, you know, here he is. I'm going nice. to give him a out. Yeah. <laughs> what, what time is yeah, it? Yeah, He's having a cup of coffee tomorrow, right? Yeah, it is tomorrow in Australia. We can always count on the on the the, the world never ending today because it's always tomorrow in Australia. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that. I like that. It's good. <laughs> well, thank you again, Mitch, and uh, all the very best. And we'll be on this afternoon on uh, your your chat this afternoon. Who, just remind us who would uh, what time and and what are so you doing? So we've got Ryan Foland coming up this afternoon. Uh, the time is four Pacific. Mm -hmm. which is seven Eastern and Ryan is going to share his 313 communication approach to immediately and effectively communicate clearly on clubhouse, both when you're being introduced and when you're involved or engaged in a conversation to stand out above all the noise, to build your sphere of influence and to make a difference in the lives of everybody else in the room. So it should be a really good show. I'm looking, looking forward to it. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much, you guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mitch. All the best. And Bye. One, one reminder for all of you, since we are being of service, remember Monday was our how-to episode. There will be a future how-to episode next week, and we'll have one every week. That's the plan. And that's for us to give you some practical tips that you can immediately apply in your business when it comes to cultural intelligence, emotional intelligence. So if you missed that episode, go back on YouTube, Facebook, on all the other platforms. Find episode 141. That was the Monday episode. And we did have a worksheet that comes with it. So 
go into the comment section or the chat function of that episode, get your worksheet. It's free for you. It's our condensed wisdom, quote unquote, for you. So make sure you take that with you. There is something to do for you. You got homework, people. All right. My, right, my right. sense at the end here. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow for another episode. Looking Yay. forward to it. Bye -bye. Ciao for now.